In the first couple of weeks of the course, we have talked about how probabilities combine with each other. And the examples have been what I call rather small. A few rolls of a die, two tosses of a coin, a couple of cards dealt from a deck, and the probability calculations have been exact. But when you want to do statistics, you're usually talking about large samples. You're talking about, you know, a large a sample of voters, or you've divided uh, your patients into two groups, and one group is going to get your treatment, and the other group is going to get a control. You're going to try and compare. And those two groups, if your comparison is going to be easy to understand, have to be somewhat large. That is a natural sense. So we want to move to large samples as quickly as possible, and this is it. So why can't we do the same exact calculations that we did for the small samples? Well, we can. But the numbers get very big very quickly. So, you know, factorials get large. Uh, powers uh, get uh, correspondingly small if they're powers of fractions. And it turns out that there are some very good quick approximations that you can get to probabilities that uh, you can make based on analogs of the sets of ideas that you had in STAT 2.1x. So slowly we will build up to that. So we start talking about large samples, and the idea is we're going to move from exact calculations of probabilities to approximate probabilities. And we're going to start with the simplest case of large samples. We're going to start with a large sample of successes, successes and failures. So you have a large number of independent success-failure trials, and uh, you can imagine the base example to be a large number of tosses of a coin. That's going to be my example in this uh, segment. But uh, eventually we're going to change that to a large sample of voters, or each of whom has either voted for a proposition or against it. Um, or a large sample of patients, each of whom has either recovered from the disease or not. So a large number of success-failure trials. For now, we're going to stick with the simplest case where we're just tossing a coin. And uh, as always, if I don't say anything to describe the coin, you can assume it's fair. We're tossing a coin many, many, many times. And associated with this is a law of probability, which is called the law of large numbers. Large numbers of tosses, yes which has a familiar name. It's something that people understand, or at least think they understand, intuitively. It is what is informally known as the law of averages. And in terms of coin tossing, this says that as you keep tossing in the long run, so you're going to be tossing and tossing and tossing till your finger is tired, you get about half heads and half tails. This is something we talked about um, very early on in the course when we're talking about the frequency theory of probabilities. So what we're going to do is we're going to examine this statement. There is a reason I have it in quotes. I want to see what it's actually saying. And once we have some sense of what it is really saying, we're going to take the quotes off. And as a first step, I'm going to look at this second part about half heads and half tails. You know that there's a redundancy there. If I have about half heads, necessarily I must have about half tails, so I'm just going to drop these last three words because these two sentences mean exactly the same. As you keep tossing, in the long run, you get about half heads. That is an informal statement of the law of averages, and uh, we're going to examine what it means. And we're going to start out by noting a few things it doesn't mean. These are common misconceptions that people have. If you don't have them, I'm delighted. But I want to rule them out in this segment, and in the next segment we'll say what it, what it does mean. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine having tossed a coin lots of times, and supposing I've tossed a coin 99 times, and all 99 times I saw heads. You know it's not likely, but you also know that it's possible it could happen. So my question to you is this. I've tossed 99 times, I've seen 99 heads, and I want you to think 
about the hundredth toss that is just going to come up? What about the chance of heads on the hundredth toss? So your law of average is said in the long run you get about half heads and half tails. Well, you've got all heads thus far. So does that mean, for example, that on the hundredth toss you're due for a tail? You're more likely to get a tail than you were before? Well, if you believe that tosses are independent, then in the first 100 tosses, no matter what happened on the first 99, the chance that toss number 100 comes up heads is one half. That's right. The chance does not change for the 100th toss uh, based on information on the first 99 tosses. That is exactly what independence says. And why does that not contradict the law of averages, which is saying that in the long run you should get about half and half, and here I'm getting about 100%? It's because 100 tosses is a lot of tosses, but it's finite. Any finite number of tosses, no matter how large, is still the short run. If I tossed a coin a million times and something hugely unlikely happened, but it did happen, that is, I got a million heads in a row, then toss number million and one, the chance that I get ahead is still one half. Any fixed toss, any finite number of tosses, is still the short run, so the law of averages doesn't really apply. That's the first thing to keep in mind. And the next thing I'm going to look at is, all right, so what does it mean? So here's a repeat of the statement. As you keep tossing in the long run, you get about half heads. Well, let's look at half heads. So we're going to compare the chance of 50 heads in 100 tosses to the chance of 500 heads in 1,000 tosses. That's half heads. Agreed? So how do we calculate these? We have a formula. The chance of a certain number of heads in a certain number of tosses, that's what the binomial formula does. And so you have, in this case, the binomial formula, the number of trials is 100. Success is getting a head, so the chance of heads is a half. And you want 50 successes. So number of trials, choose number of successes, probability of success to the power number of successes, probability of failure to the power number of failures. And the same thing here. If you want to use the notation, n, the number of trials, is 1,000. k, the number of heads you want, is 500. p is a half. And I'm plugging in to the binomial formula. And as you can see, you're going to have some large numbers here and some very small numbers here, and you have to put them together. Uh, this one, many hand calculators will do. By the time you get to this one, hand calculators start to smoke. But you have something better than a hand calculator. You have a computer that has a probability calculator. And so use the probability calculator in your text. And you see about 8% chance that you get 50 heads in 100 tosses, and only about 2.5% chance that you get 500 heads in 1,000 tosses. So what happened there? The chance of getting half heads went down as you increased the number of tosses. And you know the chance of getting half a million heads in a million tosses? What do you think that's going to be? Really, really small. And there's no way around it. The chance of getting half heads goes down. It is not true that as you keep tossing, you're more likely to get exactly half heads. The word about is really important. Hitting 50%, bang on, exactly, is less and less likely as you increase the number of tosses. So this is number two in what the law of averages does not say. It does not say that you're more likely to get exactly half heads. And you know, we've always had this notion in STAT2 that, yes, we have formulas and we can do a calculation, but it doesn't really sink in 
until you can see it somehow physically. And what I'd like to do is I would like to look at the chance of getting exactly half heads. And first note that if the number of tosses was odd, like if we had 25 tosses, then the chance of getting exactly half heads is, is zero. Half of 25 is 12 and a half. You can't get 12 and a half heads. So for all odd numbers of tosses, the chance is zero in the first place. For even numbers of tosses, let's see what happens. We're going to start with small numbers. You have the binomial distribution, four tosses, you're looking at the number of heads. In four tosses, you can get zero, one, two, three, or four heads. This is something you used in, um, I think, one of the exercises in the second week. The chance of two heads is, by binomial formula, uh, just under 0.4, just under 40%. And now, on the same scale, I've drawn the probabilities for the number of heads in 10 tosses. And that's why the scale goes from 0 to 10. Here, of course, you can't get 5, 6, 7, 8 heads, and that's why you can't see anything here. But with 10 tosses, you can get 0 through 10 heads. Um, on the scale at which I've drawn them, I can hardly see probabilities of 0 and 10, but they're there. Take a look at what's happened to the histogram. The chance of 5 heads, exactly half, is just under a quarter. It's just under 25%. It's gone down. The central bar has become shorter. Now, why is that? Well, let's take a look here. What is the total area of these bars? It's the total probability of getting any number of heads in four tosses, and that's 100%. So you've taken your total area of 100%, and you've distributed it over 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. When you get to 10 tosses, the total probability is still 100%, but it's distributed over 0 to 10, centered at 5. So what's happened is this histogram has slid over so that it's centered at 5, and then somebody's taken a great big hand up at the top and squished it down. And now it looks like this. So it's wider and flatter. And it has moved to the right. It's wider because now there are more possible values of heads it has moved to the right because with more tosses you expect more heads. And it has squished down. That's what we're talking about now. Because the total area of 100% is distributed over a much bigger range of values. And the squishing down means the central bar has gotten shorter, which means the chance of getting exactly half heads has come down. So it's just under 40% here. It's just under 25% with 10 tosses. We saw that it's just under 8% with 100 tosses. With 100 tosses, your histogram goes from 0 all the way out to 100, which is off my screen. And the histogram's really, really low. The highest bar is at 8%. And so that histogram kind of splooches out. And that's why the central bar is going down. So, what does the law of averages actually say? Does it say anything? So what we noticed is that as you keep tossing, in the long run you get about half heads. That word has to be important, because if you delete it, you get half heads, you get exactly half heads. That's just not true. In the long run, you are less and less likely to get exactly half heads. So what do we have to do? Well, we need to give ourselves a little bit of room. We want to look at exactly half heads we look at kind of sort of half heads. So we'll take 100 tosses compared to 1,000 tosses, and now we'll give ourselves a little room for error. In the case of 100 tosses, we'll look at the chance of 50 heads, give or take 5. And similarly here, 500 heads, give or take 5. Not exactly half heads, about half heads. We're going to try, try and define the word about. So let's see what happens there. Can we find this chance? Certainly. 100 tosses. You want a, set, a number of heads. How many heads is that? That's 45 through 55 heads. We've done things like this before. 
binomial formula. N is 100, uh, P is a half, and you want 45 through 55 heads. And so N is 100, P is a half, K is 45, 46, etc. through 55. And uh, here you have N is a thousand, P is still a half, heads is still success. And the list 500 plus or minus 5 is 495, 496, etc. up to 505. There are 11 numbers in each of these lists. So how do you find the chance? Well, you can plug in binomial formula here, here, etc. and here, and then add up, and then play the same game again, plug in here, here, etc. here, and then add up. And uh, fortunately, you don't actually have to do that by hand. On a calculator, you've got a um, computer calculator that will just do it for you if you enter these two endpoints and these two parameters here. So if I run the text probability calculator, I get hmm, 73% here and only about 27% here. What's going on? The chance of about half heads went down again. And uh, I think you will now believe that if I tossed a million times and if I looked at the chance of half a million plus or minus the same error estimate 5, that chance would be even smaller. And there's no getting away from it. As you keep tossing, the chance of number of heads in the range, half the number of tosses, that's your central bar, 50 here, 500 here, plus or minus a fixed amount, 5 in both cases, that chance goes to 0. So about half heads in the law of averages is not half heads plus or minus a fixed number of heads. You just can't be right. Isn't this depressing? It's not this, it's not this, it's not this. Well, but you know, it is something. Let's try and get to that. The first thing we've noticed is that the law of averages is not about the number of heads. What does it say? As you keep tossing in the long run, you get about half heads. It's about a proportion. And what it's saying is that in the long run, the proportion of heads is close to a half. And so we will look at proportions and errors in the proportion, not in absolute numbers of heads. So we will look at heads in the range 50% plus or minus an error in the percent, 50% percent plus or minus 5%, uh, which is of course 45% to 55%. In terms of proportions, this is the same as 0.5 plus or minus 0 0.05. That's 0 0.5 is the 50% and the 0 0.05 is the plus 5% here. And in terms of proportions, 45% to 55% is 0.45 to 0.55. And this is the range we're going to look at, this and similar ranges. Probability of heads plus or minus an error in the percent. And why is that any different to what we've been doing thus far? Well, let's see. In 100 tosses, 45 heads to 55 heads is exactly 45% to 55%. It's 100 tosses. In 1,000 tosses, 45% to 55% in 1,000 tosses is 450 to 550. That's a long list. That list is 101 entries long. So what's happened is we are giving ourselves some room and we are giving ourselves a fixed amount of wiggle room, but the fixed amount is a percentage of the number of tosses, which means as 
an absolute number of heads, it's larger as you increase the number of tosses. And it's this kind of interval to which the law of averages applies. And we'll see that in some detail in the next segment. For now, I want to recap. The law of averages is a long-run statement. It's a not about any finite set of tosses. Any finite set is the short run. So to really understand the law of averages, you should be looking at limits as the number of tosses goes to infinity. It's about the proportion of heads, not about the number of heads. And it's about the proportion of heads give or take some wiggle room in the proportion which, as we have seen here, is different from the number of heads give or take the same wiggle room in the number of heads. So, next segment. What exactly does it say?